pay me. Tomorrow, I'll let a public defender trot your ass into a 25 delay. Okay? We need money. We really want to solve all our problems. Talk to me. I know how we can turn it up on us. You've been lying to us our whole lives. <laughs> I hope you had a good enough reason. Is Lauren Baldwin in danger? Power episode eight trailer breakdown. This thing is getting fire. We still haven't seen the remnants of Mecca's tie to ghosts. As Courtney Kemp mentioned in a Q&A, she hinted at it. She didn't officially say it. But we're thinking that there's going to be something going on there. And are you guys satisfied with the aftermath that happened in Episode 7? So as we break down Trailer 8 and put these clues together, be sure to post your comments and let me know what you think. If you're finding me for the first time, please subscribe to the channel. Be sure to turn on notifications so when I drop videos, you get them. We will be going live tonight. This is going to be the livest crew. Last Monday, we had 750. Let's make it liver tonight. I want you guys to turn out for J-Mo, Nita the Diva, and Moochie. It goes down at 9 p.m. Eastern. And we will be uploading it to the podcast when we're done. For austerity purposes, let's watch the trailer one more time. And then pick it apart. Pay me. Tomorrow, if I let a public defender trot your ass into a 25 delay. Okay? We need money. We really want to solve all our problems. Talk to me. I know how we can turn it up on us. You've been lying to us our whole lives. <laughs> I hope you had a good enough reason. Is Lauren Baldwin in danger? Very beginning. We got greedy ass Davis McClain talking to Tariq. Telling him, look, bro, I know it's going to be tomorrow, but if you don't come up with that money, your ass going to get a public defender. And my greedy Beamer Benz a Bentley driving ass is getting the hell up out of here. Tariq ain't got no choice, man. To say Davis McClain is greedy would be the same thing as saying that the KKK is supremacist, white supremacist. His ass is greedy. He cares for nothing but himself. And even though Tariq is his client, this man wants his money. Now, mind you, he wants money so badly, he knows what's going on with Tariq and the Tejada family. And he has been playing Monet against Tariq and increasing the money. I mean, this dude probably done made $3 million off these two families. And he's in the midst of something. He even had his life threatened by Kane, and he don't give a damn. Dude want money. So Tariq ain't got no choice but to get the money. Next scene, we see Reet talking to Kane. And Kane is like, look, bro, I think I got another way to get this money. How are we going to do it? And Tariq is looking at him, yo, talk to me. But at the end of the day, how in the hell can these two trust each other? Especially Tariq. And whatever they're getting ready to get into, I think it's safe for you guys to assume Tariq is going to try to come out with the upper hand. Because he knows Kane is not that bright. And then Kane tried to test my man, but said, ain't you supposed to be the smart one? And well, Tariq is supposed to be the smart one. So whatever dastardly deeds they do, I'm sure Tariq is going to try to leave Kane holding the bag so that he can get in a little bit of trouble and Tariq can get away. Now, they want you to possibly think that maybe whatever they're up to from Kane's idea maybe has something to do with these cats breaking in to Mecca's hangar, maybe taking some drugs, taking some money. Because right now, Kane has been basically shipped out when it comes to his dealings with Mecca because he done plugged in Lorenza, and now Kane is the outside man looking in. So maybe Kane wants to get some get back on Mecca. But ladies and gentlemen, don't be deceived by the trailer. They cut this in a manner where you might think that that's what's going on here, but I'm telling you it's not. This is probably some get back from Mahoney or some of the crew that we just seen Mecca and Lorenzo's people come together to beat up and rob and all that. This is probably just some retaliation on behalf of that crew to get at Mecca and all the things Mecca's got going on. So don't think that this is it. Whatever Tariq and Kane got going on, it's going to be something different. And then we get to my sweet Diana. Oh, boy. I'm almost about to put that wife TV crown on Diana because I love the way she's standing up to her mama, finally. For all these years, she's been the puppet for a mother who, let's just be honest, people, 
Monet Tejada ain't winning mother of the year. Nowhere. I guess ain't no mama in the power universe winning mother of the year, but especially Monet Tejada. This season, not only was she letting everybody down, but she was letting people down in favor of her panty draws and heart. But I will give her credit for this. With Mecca, she's got a son by him, and she knows it. So I'm going to give her a little credit on that one. You know, if you're going to let your guard down, that's the person you do it with. But at the same time, the kids you got by somebody else, you don't just treat them like dirt underneath the circus, you know, like dirt in between the nails of the elephant in the circus. Come on, Monet, you can't do that. And in this scene, Diana is getting more and more turned up because she about to spill the damn beans on this big family secret. And she getting so turned up, Monet about to put them hands on her. But I don't know how Monet going to choke her. Look at them nails on Monet. Diana better be worried. She might cut them eyeballs out with them nails. And you see Kane having to hold her back as she's trying to get Mo turned up toward Diana. And Diana's just sitting there laughing at that ass. Just look at Diana. I'm proud of you, Lady D. I'm going to start calling you Lady D because you've grown up. And I know with the way you are growing up is upsetting some people. You even said that in an interview, but it's kind of the growth you needed because at the end of the day, no one is more wrong than your mama. So I'm here for you, team Diana. You grow up and let's see where the chips is going to lay with Monet. I can't wait to hear Diana spill the whole beans to everybody. And you know, at some point in time, because Diana has seen the text from a D, which is for Dante, and we saw that at the end of this last episode. She done put two and two together. She's seen how the mama really ain't feeling the daddy. And I've heard you women get on me over and over. It's a woman's thing. Well, Diana has women's intuition too, a spidey sense for women. And she know that that mama is feeling another man. And she ain't going to let that happen to her daddy. And you lucky I ain't got that picture with Diana showing all her teeth. Or I would put it up here right now. But I'm with Team Diana. Then we got Jenny, who I'm so upset with after you was up there raising Kane with my sweetheart Jazz, my little sweetie growing up. I ain't like how you tried to play her bitch ass Jenny. And she's wondering, talking to Sax in the bedroom, having pillow talk, is Lauren in trouble? Hell yeah, Lauren is in trouble. Lauren is in trouble not from the illegal aspects of life. But Lauren ass is in trouble also from the legal aspects of life where Davis McClain about to get on that stand and expose Lauren because of the vengeance he wants with Professor Addiction, who had the authenticated gall to mention that man's wife name, Marilyn, and ask him where that ring at. Damn. Boy, 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 boy. Next clip, we get someone that looks like it could possibly be Kane going into some secret stash warehouse that's got drugs and, and, and dumpsters and all kinds of stuff. No doubt this is definitely that hangar where Mecca is keeping all his stuff at. And then we get Mecca with a gun looking down on someone. Who did he take out? We know he ain't scared to take out nobody. But what I want to know is we didn't get any pictures of Mecca Killer Avengers. We didn't get to see any of the Killer Avengers in this trailer and i'm wondering if we're gonna see him we get the homie effie who by all accounts is her own lone wolf as well and she is running from someone now she's all dressed up again do you guys remember a couple of episodes she was dressed up with diana and we just know that reek done got diana panty draws and the last episode before this he got effie's panty draws and we know Effie's got her credit card cloning business. And it makes you wonder, is she running because she about to get in trouble with someone? Did she steal something? We know Effie is not below, below her to just basically run off and do her own thing to make this money. So I'm about wondering how that's going to play out. And I'm also wondering how is it going to play out when she finds out that Tariq is messing with both of them, Diana and Effie. And speaking of Diana, are you guys feeling that the dynamic between Monet and Diana breaking down with all these secrets is very similar to that dynamic with Tariq and Ghost? Ghost had his mama, Ghost had Angela, and in this situation, Monet got Dante, Monet got Lorenza. Only difference is Diana really don't want to be in the drug game. She wants an education, which you should have been catering and nurturing that, Monet. But in the other situation, Tariq, 
who was getting a great education, wanted to be in the drug game. Little contrary dynamic, but not dynamic none the same. Then we see Drew breaking in someone's house. Could this finally be Everett? I doubt it. He's got the silencer on the gun. And ladies and gentlemen, let's just keep this thing 100. If Drew really and truly wanted to kill Everett, he would not have looked at his damn phone before taking a shot to kill his target. If you really want to kill somebody and your phone is buzzing, you ain't about to answer the damn phone. My man answered the phone, took the message, and then got all weepy-eyed and was crying crocodile tears and was on his way to Everett's house. See, Everett got a hold on this brother. Everett's a loose end that is going to have to be dealt with, and Drew is not going to be the one to deal with it. And then how can you guys not fall prey to this beautiful sad face? This is Lauren, and I got to admit, she's looking good as hell, and she's looking sad as hell, and she's portraying all her emotions in this pic. Good damn job to the actress playing Lauren. And I've got to believe she's all dressed up in this manner, just going by the face, because she's about to be on trial. That Tariq trial is going to happen, my people. They ain't getting around it. And this could be the look of her looking at Davis when he's going to drop all these bombshells on her and she's going to have to come clean. And when she finds out that Professor Addiction illegally pretended to be her lawyer with the police department. Crooked ass professor addiction. And Lauren is just looking to the left like, no, the hell this B didn't. I'm still about wondering if they're going to let Lauren get her hands on professor addiction. Don't hold your breath for that, but wouldn't you just love to see it? So post me all your comments on what you thought about this trailer. Be sure to join us live tonight at 9 p.m., as we go to talk about power, we will be back tomorrow, Tuesday night at 9 p.m. to do power. Join us. Post your comments. Follow me on Instagram. And let's get this power talk. That's going to do it for this video. Don't forget to like the video. Please comment, subscribe. You get yourself that life game. Till that next sex is hell video. I'll see you.